Part 1. Understanding Disability In this section, Interpretations of Disability Table 1. A comparison of the medical and social models of disability Key terminology Words matter Table 2. Terminology to use or avoid Guidance for interacting with persons with disabilities Table 3. General etiquette for interacting with persons with disabilities Table 4. Interacting with people with a hearing impairment Table 5. Interacting with people with a mobility impairment Table 6. Interacting with people with learning or intellectual disabilities Table 7. Interacting with people with a visual impairment Table 8. Interacting with people who are deaf blind Table 9. Understanding and interacting with people affected by Hansen's disease in bracket, leprosy Table 10. Portraying persons with disabilities in the media Barriers to inclusivity Table 11. Barriers to the social inclusion of persons with disabilities Did you know? Over the last 50 years, there have been various attempts to describe and explain the complex relationships between illness, impairment, disability, and handicap. This led to the adoption of the International Classification of Functioning, Disability, and Health, known more commonly as ICF, in brackets, Oliver, 1996, page 2. The ICF is the World Health Organization framework for measuring health and disability at both individual and population levels. The framework was officially endorsed by all 191 WHO member states in the 54th World Health Assembly on 22nd May 2001. In brackets, resolution WHA 54.21. The ICF sheds new light on the notions of health and disability by shifting the focus from the cause to the impact of disability. Furthermore, ICF takes into account the social aspects of disability and does not see disability simply as a medical or biological dysfunction. Fact Around 10% of the world's population or 650 million people live with a disability. They are the world's largest minority. Source United Nations Enable Fact Sheet on Persons with Disabilities. Interpretations of Disability The definition and interpretation of disability has been an evolving and heavily debated topic between and within medical, academic, social, political, and economic circles, with no clear consensus. To a large extent, the various interpretations have influenced the interaction and response of persons without disabilities to persons with disabilities and vice versa. Table 1 summarizes the two most popular schools of thought in interpreting disability and the general social response to each interpretation. Table 1 a comparison of the medical and social models of disability Assumptions There are two sides The medical model side and the social model side On the medical model side Persons with disabilities are the problem Persons with disabilities are sick and need to be cured by doctors Persons with disabilities will always be dependent on others Persons with disabilities are abnormal. On the social model side, persons with disabilities are not the problem. Barriers created by society are the problem. Barriers include legal barriers, physical barriers, information barriers, and attitudes. If barriers were removed, persons with disabilities would be fully capable of leading independent lives and participating fully in society. Persons with disabilities are normal and disability is a natural part of human variation. 
The removal of barriers and the provision of accommodation and social support are not favors, but are fundamental to the full enjoyment of human rights by persons with disabilities. Consequences of the assumptions Medical model side A lack of both societal awareness and commitment to the removal of barriers Violation of the autonomy of persons with disabilities as medical professionals and others act as primary decision makers. Persons with disabilities may become passive recipients of charity and treatment rather than active claimants of human rights. Persons with disabilities experience a sense of failure because they cannot be cured and or feel that they are social outcasts. Persons with disabilities may become permanently dependent on others and marginalized from society so that they do not fully enjoy their human rights. On the social model side, societal awareness of and meaningful commitment to the removal of barriers, respect for the autonomy of persons with disabilities. Persons with disabilities become active claimants of their human rights. Persons with disabilities become empowered as full participants in society and members of their communities. It is important to remember that models of interpreting disability do not represent every individual's experience. Interpretations of disability are as varied as the different disabilities that people face when engaging with any one person with a disability. We need to understand that disability means different things to different people. Regardless of the interpretation of disability, different impairments affect individuals in different ways. Some have a single impairment, while for others, impairments are multiple. Some impairments are present at birth, and others are acquired later in life. Such factors will have different implications for health and individual capacity, and will generate different responses in cultural and social settings. As the social model and this handbook advocate, medical, economic, physical and social barriers can be minimized or completely removed if persons with disabilities and persons without disabilities work together to develop appropriate solutions. This requires mutual respect and recognition of each other's experiences, universal human rights, and the right to self-determination. Furthermore. Recognizing an individual's right to full participation in society, regardless of any impairment, is as a driving force for targeted policies and practices that encourage inclusion. The story Exceeding Expectations Amina's story Amina Abdullahi became disabled as a result of contracting polio, a viral disease that invades the nervous system and can cause paralysis. Many of those who have contracted polio face discrimination in Nigeria and find it difficult to lead a normal life. For Amina, the situation worsened when her father died and she became the sole provider for her family. Although trained as a tailor, she could not find employers who would let her practice in their shop. Then Amina learned of the Kano Polio Victims Trust Association. This organization provides financial and technical support including vocational training so that members can engage in cottage industries to support their families. The association, with support from the USAID, United States Agency for International Development, provided equipment for Amina and other association members to practice their sewing skills. After improving her craft, Abdullahi was admitted to an advanced training course. After just three weeks, she had gained new skills and was confident she could use them to fulfill her dream of opening her own shop. Source USAID 2010 Another story Miss Wheelchair Nigeria On 7th of November 2010, 33 women in wheelchairs representing various states from the Southeast and South South geopolitical zones of Nigeria competed for the title of Miss Wheelchair. The first program of its kind in Nigeria, the Miss Wheelchair Nigeria pageant aims to select a spokeswoman for the more than 20 million persons 
living with disabilities in Nigeria. The pageant also celebrates the achievements of physically challenged women and their unique contributions to society. A Voice Against Discrimination Immaculate Story Ms. Immaculate Achinehu, a civil servant with the Ministry of Information and Strategy, Oweri, emerged as the winner of the regional title of Miss Wheelchair Nigeria in Imo State. Immaculate has used the wheelchair since the age of five, when a medical mishap during her polio vaccination affected the use of her legs. She has two other siblings who, along with her parents, have been very supportive of her participation in the competition. Immaculate first heard about the pageant through advertisements posted by the program's national coordinator. Believing she could stand out as a capable spokesperson and a voice for the physically challenged, Immaculate decided to enter the competition. Her goal was to bring attention to issues of discrimination against persons with physical disabilities. As a wheelchair user for most of her life, Immaculate is also familiar with discrimination on both personal and institutional levels. After dating a young man for two years and accepting his marriage proposal, Immaculate was heartbroken when the young man's father harshly rejected the idea of his son marrying a woman who uses a wheelchair. That was the end of the relationship and Immaculate remains single today, hoping to meet someone who will look beyond her disability to appreciate her virtues. Immaculate also laments other forms of discrimination in society. For example, she points out how the low-cost transportation scheme, KEKE-NAPEP, coordinated by the National Poverty Eradication Program, NAPEP, excludes persons with certain physical disabilities. Although the motorized tricycles are part of a national initiative to alleviate the financial burden of transportation costs for the average Nigerian, People in wheelchairs are excluded because the vehicles cannot accommodate them. Consequently, wheelchair users are subjected to more expensive means of transportation simply because they use a wheelchair. Incidentally, as Immaculate shared her story for this handbook, she was sitting in a car having lunch with friends in a parking lot. This was not because she preferred to have lunch in a parking lot, but because the restaurant they had chosen to go to is not accessible to wheelchair users. Immaculate wants to use her role as a spokesperson to bring attention to issues of discrimination such as this. She says her newfound fame from competing in the Miss Wheelchair Nigeria pageant has boosted her confidence and empowered her to speak out. She is currently developing the foundation for the physically challenged and for widows to advocate for and empower these communities in Imo State. In addition to raising awareness about discrimination, Immaculate hopes to use the pageant as a platform to spread the message that women, regardless of their abilities or positions, are queens and should support each other. She wants Nigerians of all abilities to support each other rather than look down on those with physical disabilities. Key Terminology